Hello, everybody. I'm going to assume there's people there on the other side of the, on the other side of the camera. My name is uh, Brenda O'Neill. I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Public Affairs, and with me today is Paul Wilson, my Associate Dean uh, for Students and Enrollment. And we are extremely uh, happy to be with you today to welcome you to this session. Um, as I said, my name's the Brenda O'Neill. I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Public Affairs, and essentially what that means is I'm responsible for uh, the administration of the faculty, including the, the courses, the academic side, uh, some of the recruitment, uh, hiring, all of those things that you would normally think that a manager sort of does, uh, but in this case, it's in the academic context. So pleased to have you here. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to start by saying is uh, what exactly is a faculty of public affairs? Uh, because we are the only one in Canada. We are a very uh, unique, and I dare say there are very few of them across the world. And so one of the things that we do in the Faculty of Public Affairs is we concentrate on uh, governance that involves government, but we also concentrate on uh, programs that have to do with uh, civil society, which means not uh, the government sector itself, but organizations outside of the private sector that are concentrating on citizens themselves. So you can think of a whole bunch of different uh, institutions that do those sorts of things. We have a particular mission in, in the Faculty of Public Affairs, one that I think is tremendous, which is to build better democracies and, and greater societies and to think about uh, enhancing citizenship. So it is very much a particular kind of focus, the programs that we have in public affairs. And these are important ones to me, um, in part because of the nature of my own uh, studies. When I was a student, I studied both in, or in three different areas, uh, political science, I did economics, and I also did uh, uh, public policy and administration. So all of these are what we would call an out key elements of uh, the Faculty of Public Affairs. One of the things that I do wanna talk about is that you'll get a, a number of uh, opportunities as a student in the Faculty of Public Affairs. And at, at Carleton, there are a number of these. One of them is what we call CUROP, uh, the Carleton University Research Opportunity. And it is essentially an opportunity for students to work with faculty members uh, on research projects of their own choosing. It's a competitive process, so not a lot of students get to do it, but it's one of the things that we think is extremely important when you're thinking about going to university because you need that opportunity to get your hands dirty, if you will, in, in research, and that's one of the ones that we do have. What's another thing that we can uh, kind of highlight in the Faculty of Public Affairs? We currently have four alumni serving as members of parliament. And there's a number, a whole bunch of them that are working behind the scenes. So again, that tells you a little bit about the nature of the faculty and the programs that we have and the units that we have in it and what our focus is. It's just one, uh, I think those are just a couple of the reasons why the Faculty of Public Affairs, I'm gonna tell you, is the best faculty, bar none, uh, to, do your, to do your programs and your undergraduate uh, uh, degrees in Canada. I think it's the best. I think we're the best, and I certainly am tooting my horn, and that's one of the reasons why I'm here and why I'm the dean of this faculty. So when you come to the Faculty of Public Affairs, your experience should include things like uh, some, uh, could include things like some experience in working with Canadian Parliament, federal departments, uh, in national offices of not-for-profit organizations. You can think about working at embassies or national media. Media is another big one that we uh, have programs in, in the Faculty of Public Affairs. I mean, those are just a few of the examples. Before we get ahead of ourselves though, I know you're here because you likely have questions and you wanna hear a little bit more about the details of the programs we have and the units that we have. And so to do that, I'm gonna hand it over to uh, Paul Wilson. As I said, he's the Associate Dean of Students uh, and Enrollment. Uh, take it away, Paul. Thanks, uh, thanks, Dean O'Neill. I'm just, um selecting a PDF file here. Okay, just, just a little visual distraction here. So, uh, so welcome to the Faculty of Public Affairs. Um, this is a shot uh, of one of, the, one of the buildings that we use at, at Carleton. Uh, it used to be called the River Building. It's now known as Richcraft Hall, but you can see why it was called the River Building because it's right next to the Rideau River which uh, uh, if you know Ottawa, uh, the, river, uh, the Rideau River and the Rideau Canal are two piece, you know, waterways that basically are on sides of the campus. So we're in a beautiful situation. Uh, a number of our units are in this beautiful new, new, new building. Um, I want to uh, just 
give a uh, yeah uh, talk about some some of the things that that uh, that Brenda's already mentioned, but uh, just what is the faculty of public affairs? And uh, when we talk about a faculty, you know, maybe you know this, maybe you don't. The, a faculty can be the individual, prof you know, the individual professors that teach in a university are called faculty members, but faculties are also these big administrative units. Um, there's uh, four or five faculties at, at Carleton and the Faculty of Public Affairs is one of those. Now, I attended a, a, you know, a university for a couple of degrees when I was much younger. I won't mention it, it starts with Q and is in Kingston. And you know, my faculty was the Faculty of Arts and Science, which had everything from history and politics to, you know, to biology and physics. Uh, our Faculty of Public Affairs is much more narrowly focused uh, because as, as Dean O'Neill said, it's all about units that deal with governance, politics, uh, the relationships between public and private in Canada, civil society, um, and those questions about, as I've got on the slide here, building a better democracy and fostering informed citizenship. That's what we're about. Now, there's lots of other units. You know, I mean, history is not one of our units. History is really important for these sorts of questions. But in public affairs, we bring all of these intentionally together. Uh, and we're one of the very few faculties that does that. So the, the programs, the professors, uh, and the students are all in this community of people that are uh, dedicated to pursuing these issues. Now, there's about 7,000 students in FPA. There's close to 200 professors. Um, so, you know, we think that uh, the, un the units are important and they're the key thing, all of the different departments. But we think that being part of the faculty of public affairs is actually that it's bigger than the sum of its parts, mm -hmm. that we do provide a community um, where people with like interests can explore these issues and get the kind of training uh, that will be necessary and, and important, you know, useful for you moving on in whatever type of career um, you are, uh, you're going to pursue. Um, so I, if you want information about the particular units, it's best to get it from the units because they're all specific and they can speak best to, you know, what they are, 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 are doing. And they will speak quite enthusiastically about why, you know, you should come and deal with them because they all have something mm -hmm. to offer. We have about 12 separate undergraduate degree programs. Um, some of these are only undergraduate. Uh, some of these units offer both graduate and undergraduate programs, and some of them are just graduate. I, I, I come from a unit called political management, which is about kind of the practice of politics. Um, uh, most of us have like practical backgrounds working in politics. Uh, we're only a graduate unit, although we do have one undergrad course. So there's different profiles of these of these uh, of these units. But here are, here are some of them. Some of the uh, some of our units, uh, you work towards a Bachelor of Arts degree, a BA. Uh, and so that would be uh, criminology and criminal justice, uh, where you're trying to understand criminalization and society's use of punishment. It's an interdisciplinary pro uh, program. It has lots of professors, you know, on, that are that kind of their day jobs, you know, are out uh, working in the courts or as lawyers. And then they come and um, uh, they come and teach in the program. Um, uh, it could be law and legal studies, which is the oldest Bachelor of Arts program in law in the country. Now, this is not a, uh, a practitioner's law degree, but it could, e it could easily lead towards doing a, a Bachelor of Law uh, at, 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 at some point, or, you know, just good for understanding how the law works, um, its role in society, uh, its economic, cultural, political structures, how law fits in there. Political science, uh, of course, studying uh, how politics works and questions of, uh, of, of government and institutions and elections and how they work, whether it's in, you know, Canadian politics, North American politics, mm -hmm. You've got uh, comparative politics, gender and in politics, international relations, political <laughs> theory, 
Oh, not my favorite, but uh, you know that, that may motivate you. It may motivate uh, Dr. O'Neill. Um, uh, so that's that's political science. We have something called uh, Eurus, uh, European and Russian studies. If you want to focus really specifically on that area of the world, um, it's a it's a small program, closely knit, uh, looks at across disciplines for things that affect uh, the European and and, and Russian uh, regions. Um, so, you know, that's a very a different type of thing. And then we've got African studies, which is partly within our faculty mm -hmm. and partly within uh, the Faculty of Arts and, and uh, Social Sciences. Um, and again, is taking a, you know, I, I mean, it's bigger than just, just one region. It's a whole continental approach to uh, culture and language, geography, uh, looking at questions like aid, mm -hmm. trade, migration, um, that gives a really, you know, uh, deep perspective on uh, on the African continent. Um, but not all of our programs are BAs. Some of them you get you work towards a different degree. So, for example, there's the Bachelor of Journalism, you know, uh, which is which is its its own degree. Now, journalism. Uh, well, when Carleton was started back in what 1942, I think the first grads from the program were journalism and public administration because being in ottawa those were really the some of the foundational things that carlton was dealing with so journalism is one of the oldest units it's an internationally renowned uh, program a distinguished faculty a prominent alumni um, being in ottawa is a huge advantage in terms of the national press gallery national news bureaus uh the federal government if you need people to interview there's lots of people to interview here um uh, ngos uh, arts and cultural they've got great professional studios uh for their work so you know that's the bachelor of journalism program um the bachelor of communications and media studies is is a is a, a kind of it has a technical aspect to it where it's about uh producing um uh, kind of documentaries and 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 uh, and film, um, also different types of of, uh, of media, um, uh, because we're we live in a saturated media landscape, and so this is looking at some of the technologies, uh, thinking critically about how that's how those are used in society. Mm -hmm. um, the Bachelor of Communications and Media Studies, again, a separate degree, um, uh, which works in this sort of a world. It, it looks at uh, um, uh, actually, I think I got those those wrong. Yeah, I was just talking about I think the Bachelor of Communications, <laughs> Media Studies, and the Bachelor of Media Production and Design is more about designing and programming, telling mm -hmm. nonfiction uh, uh, stories in a digital digital world. See, I reversed my notes and I forgot. <laughs> Always embarrassing when you when you do that. Um, we have something called Arthur Kroger College. Um, Arthur Kroger was a federal deputy minister, so deep in government. Uh, and we have a number of programs there. One's called the Bachelor of Public Affairs and Policy Management, affectionately call, uh, called the uh, the BPAPM. Um, I think you get like course marks for learning the acronym. Um, and it looks at uh, questions of, of how government uh, works on the inside. How is policy developed? Um, how, uh, you know, how do we administer uh, within within government? Um, and they have all sorts of different different streams that you can look at, whether it's communications and policy studies, um, international policy studies, public policy and administration. Um, and it's been, you know, doing this for a long time. And it's lots of students that have gone in to work within within government uh, or elsewhere, because understanding mm -hmm. government is a great precursor for lots of um, lots of, uh, of, of work. Uh, a new program, reasonably new, it started in 2015, the Bachelor of Global and International Studies, um, which uh, looks at, um, yeah, I mean, it combines global studies, international studies. These are slightly different things for people who work in the field. And it, it, uh, it brings them, it brings them together. Um, uh, and it's got uh, 18 different specializations, globalization, uh, global development, global law, social justice, uh, global migration, transnationalism, uh, global and transnational history. Uh, I, I can't remember them all, but those are a number of them. Um, so you really get to design kind of your own program and your own interests there. Um, you have to 
uh, do have some sort of a, an international experience where, I mean, in the pre-COVID world, you actually went mm. to a different part of the country and did, you know, whether it was a summer program, there's lots of different options and they, you know, you'd work with the program to get an international experience, um, which is which is awfully valuable. Um, a couple of other programs, the Bachelor of Economics um, uh, and the Bachelor of Social Work. Bachelor of Economics is, I mean, economics is the study of how individuals, companies, countries, international organizations make decisions with scarce resources and competing interests, right? Supply and demand at kind of the international level. Mm -hmm. um, so they do a lot of uh, computational statistical work, uh, data analysis. You don't have to be a math person to study economics, um, but if you are a math person, you, you could find a home there too. Um, a social work is um, uh, combines kind of uh, liberal arts with uh, uh, working towards a profession, the profession of social work. Um, mm -hmm. so looking at the principles and the theory and the practice of uh, I mean, what 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 goes into social work, uh, uh, and ultimately, you know, you'd be able to get accreditation um, uh, as a, as a social work practitioner at some point if you pursued mm -hmm. if you pursued that. So those are those are kind of at the undergrad level the type of things that we are offering in the Faculty of Public Affairs. And I wanted to make just in closing a little bit of a pitch. For what I, you know, what we call the FPA advantage. Why would you come to study here um, in FPA at Carleton in Ottawa? Well, I would say because of the name of where we are in the capital of, of, of Canada, the capital of a G8. No, it was G8 when I was in, in government. They kicked, out, they kicked out Russia. So it's now the G7. Um, mm -hmm. uh, there are lots of things that we can do here that you can't easily do elsewhere. For example, uh, I run classes and I can get guest speakers to come in um, quite easily. I've got Prime Minister Trudeau's director of policy is coming to my uh, winter class. Um, I've had people like that come into my fourth year undergraduate classes too. Um, senior public servants, ministers, other politicians, um, they're in Ottawa and it's, you know, it's, they're, they're often able to come to classes, which is pretty cool. Um, Contract instructors, I mentioned that earlier. There are lots of people who in their day jobs are working in these really quite interesting fields and they like to be involved uh, in teaching students. So we have access to people and resources here that is really quite exceptional. Um, you're part of a network of students, professors, alumni. Um, many of our alumni, because of the nature of the work, stay around Ottawa. You may not want to stay in Ottawa and that's Totally cool. People go to work everywhere in the world from FPA. But if you're you're in Ottawa, you're you have a good opportunity mm -hmm. to connect with people. You know, as uh, Dean O'Neill mentioned, a number of members of Parliament who've come through our program. Um, you know, th those are great kind of networks in Ottawa. Uh, mm -hmm. There's volunteer opportunities with uh, with political offices, with NGOs, with embassies. Uh, but there's also, um, sorry, I'm, I'm going to go on to employment in a second. Lots of things that you can, that you can do. Uh, and as Dean O'Neill mentioned, there's research opportunities, uh, things like CureOp, mm -hmm. where you can uh, get paid basically for a summer job. It's a, you know, it's an application. You've got to win your spot, but that's something that, that, that we do mm -hmm. every year. Uh, or if you want to do research with a professor um, as part of a course credit, we have that as well. Um, uh, I mentioned study abroad experiences. Um, these are all things that you can that you, that you can do here. But I did want to. I got ahead of myself for a bit to mention employment um, because I think that there's lots of great mm -hmm. employment opportunities uh, around here. Both as a student, you're getting made. I mean, some students have part time jobs uh, where they're working out in these fields. Uh, maybe you work for a member of parliament for you know a few hours a week in a constituency office uh, or maybe it's not part-time maybe it's full-time in the summer um, because the context is there's over 300,000 public servants employed in the government of Canada they're not all in Ottawa but many of them are mm -hmm. so the public service is a big employer and lots of students are able to get on with the federal government through their summer work experience program 
Um, that's not a Carleton program, but the fact that if you're in Ottawa, that's something that many students take advantage of. There's the parliamentary page mm -hmm. program, which is much smaller and much more specialized, but some Carleton students do that. Um, but even if you don't want to work for the government, government is like a magnet. It attracts uh, businesses. It attracts uh, you know, associations and lobby groups. It attracts non-governmental organizations. So within Ottawa, there's this huge concentration of, um, of groups and organizations who work within the type of field that FPA deals with. Embassies, of course, right? There's embassies from almost every country in the world are in Ottawa. So, um, so we're in the middle of this, of this uh, concentrated community of people that deal with exactly the subject matter that FPA covers. Um, and then, of mm -hmm. course, it's the same thing after graduation. You may not want to uh, to stay in Ottawa, but there, you know, are are lots of opportunities here, and it's a good launching off point um, with the kind of connections that you make um, to get into, you know, to start your career wherever that happens to be. Mm -hmm. So those were those were the comments I wanted to make. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and uh, I see we've got some questions come in. So. Maybe we can start with that. How do we deal with with questions? Does the moderator ask them or do we just scroll through? Does anyone have any questions? If you folks have any questions that have joined us today um, for Dean O'Neill or Associate Dean Wilson, um, let us know. Um, mm -hmm. Q and A tab, um, and we can get those going. Um, we've right, got right. some time for some questions here. Um, so I'll pop those in. Um, so go ahead and submit those and I'll be looking forward to hearing the answers. Uh, immigration law. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, a, that's an interesting question because you could approach it so many different ways. So many ways. Yeah. yeah. If you're going to, if you're going to do law, you're going to need to get uh, uh, an actual law degree at some point. And that's one thing, um, unfortunately, that Carleton doesn't, we don't have a, a law school um, in the professional sense. But, um, uh, you know, often people will do a, a, an undergraduate degree in a related field uh, before going into law because you, you don't necessarily have to have a, an undergrad in law. Um, but right. you could, because our legal law and legal studies department would give you a, a broader foundation on how law works, which would be yep. great to build on. Um, but you could also do something like the Bachelor of um, Global and International Studies, which mm -hmm. would allow you to look at, at uh, immigration. Right, I mentioned that they do migration studies. So you'd be looking at, at immigration in the world context of how people move, why they move. Um, that would give you great um uh how, how immigration is dealt with in other countries that would give yeah. kind of a really good foundation mm -hmm. so there's lots of different options you could approach approach that it all yeah I, I would argue it all depends on where what your particular interest is in terms of immigration law are you interested in the policy aspect of it are you interested in the sort of the personal the elements that so the family element of it if you want to think about it that way like that will determine in a sense where you might want to go but you could really do a bunch of the programs that are in the faculty of public affairs and they would all serve you very well in in moving into then a program uh in a law degree in immigration we also have as as uh, professor wilson noted we have a strong cohort of researchers working on uh migration migration studies is, is huge we have a crc which is the canada research chair coming in so that is one of the strengths, I would argue, of the faculty. If you came here with an interest in immigration, there are lots of people that you could work with, lots of courses and programs that you could take. Even something like social work. I mean, yep. that's 
that's understanding the people and what people's needs are, individuals, families, how they relate, yeah. you know, within the community. Uh, that won't teach you immigration law, but that's fine. You can you can learn that in a in a specialized law program later. Mm -hmm. um, I would I would ask, what is it that you could do to give yourself a stronger foundation um, for mm -hmm. yeah for under it gives gives you gives you uh, gives you a context in which you can build later on. So I think I would recommend that you talk to some some of the departments about, you know, ask them that question and what aspects mm -hmm. um, of their programs they would recommend you could use to build. Yeah. And congratulations for knowing exactly what you want to <laughs> what you want to do. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Yeah. Oh, internship options, co-op. Um, I mean, internships and co-ops, I, I, I run an uh, internship, and we now call it a practicum in political management, again, at the grad level. Um, sometimes these terms are used kind of, uh, sometimes you wonder if they're interchangeable. Um, I mean, so sometimes a co-op is basically a summer job. You know, the university has a co-op department um, that can assist you to get work, paid work for the summer. Um, uh, sometimes co-ops uh, have course credit associated with them, um, and some some un some units have that. So you can do a co-op and get credit. Um, so those are questions you'd have to ask the uh, ask the unit. Um, uh, yeah, but there there are there are lots of opportunities, and I'd say most of the FPA units have some sort of experiential component that you could that you could use. Yeah, and there's there's uh, great opportunities in Ottawa for that. Yeah, you mentioned already the uh, uh, GINs, right? Global and International Studies, they have a placement requirement, international placement requirement. But lots of our programs have, uh, outside of co-op, there are lots of placement opportunities within the faculty public affairs, in part because I think it, when, it, when we say our mission is, you know, build better democracies and societies, we take that literally. And that means that part of what we do with our students and think they should be doing is having some kind of experience, we call experience or learning, which means getting into the community and learning about the community through that placement or co-op or practicum. So there are lots of them in the Faculty of Public Affairs. Yeah. Yeah, ur urban planning is another question that came in. And uh, again, you could do that different different ways. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it could be a political science degree where you're understanding how government works. Um, mm -hmm. uh, urban planning is, is municipal very much, all, and, mm -hmm. and it's got a provincial component, um, uh, less federal, but you could do a political science approach. Uh, the bachelor of public, uh, uh, public administration and policy management, the BPAPM, uh, you yeah. know, they deal with public administration. And so, um, that would be relevant. Um, the most, the yeah. more specific urban planning, uh, specialized training would probably happen at the graduate level, but at the undergrad level, yeah, you have lots of paths that you could that you could look at um, mm -hmm. to get there. Yeah. Again, great, great to know exactly where you want to go. But again, as always, I think in, in the faculty of public affairs, you all often hear us say there are lots of ways to get to the end. If you have an end in mind, right? There are lots of different ways of getting there. Yeah. But you know, it's okay not to have an end in mind if you're yeah. if you're if you're sitting yeah, there thinking, true. you know, I don't know what I want to do. It's like, you know, that just saves you changing your mind later. So, you know, that's that's efficient too. You don't have to know. And sometimes it's good just to study something that you are highly uh that you're passionate about, that you're motivated uh in. Um, because or and the other thing you can do is start with a certain path in mind and then decide I think I want to change that path because I've taken some courses that I find very interesting and I think that's where I want to go. So that's part of the university experience. I think is it's a kind of it is it's there's too much pressure I think to know exactly where you want to be at the end. I think part of a university experience is often taking at least taking a few courses that you're not too sure about but that are going to stretch you in, in thinking in different ways. And I think that's one of the important, I think, experiences at a university is pushing yourself and thinking in different ways and taking or taking courses that you might not have thought about in, in you know, earlier when you started or even before. And that's, you can't really know until you get here to figure out what it is that you like. Yeah. Yeah. 
that's very true. Yeah. I think we're. Are we going to get kicked off? Just about done. Yeah. Well, thank you, everyone. <laughs> thank yeah. you so much, Dean O'Neill and Associate Dean Wilson, for sharing yeah. with us this afternoon more about public affairs and all of the options. I think this has been a really great start to the conversation and introduced students to a number of the programs that are available. And mm -hmm. what's exciting um, is today exciting. at the virtual fall open house you can continue these conversations with many of the departments that have already been mentioned. So I know mm -hmm. there's some questions about public affairs and policy management or global and international studies. And um, some of you have mentioned law and legal studies in the chat. Yep. And many of these departments also are running sessions this afternoon. So feel yep. free to go to the sessions tab um, and look for the departments that you're interested in. Um, you can either watch live sessions as they occur this afternoon or replays of sessions that have already occurred today. You can also mm -hmm. chat with our departments in the academics booths. Uh, so if you just have like one question that you really want to ask, head over to the academics tab and look for the program that you're interested in and have the conversation there. So lots of great opportunities mm -hmm. to connect today um, and so many great opportunities within the Faculty of Public Affairs that are available to students. So. Um, thank you so much for joining us today and um, for having this session with us. And we look forward to seeing you at CEO next fall. Exactly. Exactly. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everybody. Good luck Bye. making your decisions. These are, yes, these are absolutely. important times. Okay.